but Todd is going with Cord. Three of them this weekend. And a main deck, Arbor Colossus, which could come up because this deck is soft to Flyers as a rule. And so Mantis Rider is the most dangerous card in Jeskai Aggro if you're sitting on Todd's side of the table. Round number seven underway for you guys. If you are just joining us, again, it is Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan, the StarCityGames.com Open Series here in Columbus, Ohio, the best state in the entire world, or the union, as you put it earlier today. Mm -hmm. At SCG Live, hashtag SCGCOL for your tweets all weekend long. It is nice that we just get to go to the best two states for the next weekends. It is a nice back-to-back. -back. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they planned it that way. Just next time, we just go two hours north of Cleveland, and we're happy, happy. It's a windswept teeth to get things underway. Shiv and Reef here for Heron. Both these players sitting at 5-1 and one right now, so a loss will likely eliminate them from top eight contention as Anderson does have a copy of Sylvan Carey added on the second turn of the game. And Josh puts Seeker the way in the hand. And this is a card that I think over time is going to be marginalized in these Jeskai aggro decks. And hey, not a big fan of that card in this deck. The deck is so good. Uh, you know, part of the strength of this deck comes from ignoring creatures because you're not really, uh, you know, you're not looking to really burn people out. Well, this might be bad for Seeker of the way. Might be, not... might be tough. I think he may have fetched up the wrong land. Well, if it's any consolation, I doubt Seeker of the Way would have done very much at this game anyway. But I would rather have it in play than not. Well, this could be the mega bluff here to cast a nullify. That is a mega bluff. That's the thing that could happen. And here's a flood strand. It's not the mega bluff. No, it is not. Nylea's in play now. I think this time we're going to get a planes. I like I like getting a planes here, getting the third color mana in play. Plane strategy is deploy white cards. Yep. And it turns out Seeker of the Way would have at least hit for two. Maybe Todd's plays different than Seeker of the Way's in play. Maybe last turn. yes. How about Correct. that? There is Seeker of the Way, off curve. It's okay. Looks like a courser was to draw this turn. And we'll deploy the Courser. Take a look. Elvish Mystic. Now there's a Temple, so gain a life. Mystic, bottom. Flip it. Lucranos, pretty nice. Almost there for Devotion with Nylea as well. So to Heron we go. Here is an attack, we think. Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, no blocks. Yep. I mean, there's a there's an option to get the courser involved in combat there, but I think Ty can afford to take two here. Blucranos the draw, Court of Calling on top of the deck. No longer a surprise, courser going to come in. Gain a life here with that forest and Anderson to just play. Make those currently plus one. Ty can turn on the devotion here if everything goes correct. There's a Farika. Hello. Now, Pelucranos, this is a good turn. And now here's an attack. Nylea is angry. Checking for Farika here. You've got two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Yep, that's on two. Well, that wow. was easy. Very rarely, very rare to see the God tag team yeah. both online. Here's Nyland. Boy, that was, a, that was a good turn. And Joss's draw has been cumbersome, to say the least. And yeah, not doing all that much. I don't think it would have mattered if he got Seeker of the Way on turn two or turn three this game. He's getting run out of the gym. Yeah. This is a lot to face down. And Piercy has Banishing Light in hand, which does some work. But he, I don't believe he can cobble together two spells that matter in a turn, which is how he needs to catch up here. It's a Banishing Light here, as you did mention. That's going to target Pelucranos. So the big 5-5 five five is gone for now. Now here's an attack with the Seeker. Prowess, of course, triggered. I like Todd with the quick Devotion Price check, see if he might be able to make a block. Yeah. Of 
Court of Calling will be the draw for the turn. Top card is a Genesis Hydra. There's a Lanamore Waste, Trigger Courser. Nykthos is going to generate two, three, four, five mana right now. Let's see exactly what Todd wants to do on this turn. Hey, he's just got the cord. I guess the question is how much does he want to cord for? I mean, the, one of the more obvious plays is just courting for Reclamation Sage, but he might get a little fancier than that. Well, he's courting now. I guess Doomwing Giant is an option, too. Oh, just the big guy. Okay. It's a single copy in Todd's list here. Yeah, it doesn't want to play anymore. Nope. Yeah. We're good. That's turning on Devotion for both creatures, too. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and that thing's going to have Trample as well due to Nylea. It's just too much to overcome at that point. So Josh Aaron's going to concede the game. Todd Anderson does win game number one. Green Black Devotion up a game here over Jeskai Aggro. We'll take a look at the Jeskai Aggro sideboard. You'll find three copies of Anger of the Gods, three Disdainful Stroke, two Ash Cloud Phoenix, two Glare of Heresy, and then some one ofs Narset, Suspension Field, and a Race, and a Gate, and an End Hostilities. Love End Hostilities in this matchup. I like Anger of the Gods. I don't love it because it kills the early plays, but it doesn't kill everything. And I think that Josh wants to get away with. So Josh wants to get away from some of his early plays anyway, because something like Seeker of the Way is not going to be very good. Even Goblin Rabble Master often just kind of gets clogged up. So I think that Josh can get away from some of those kind of creatures, bringing in cards like in Hostilities, the Anger of God you alluded to, maybe even to sample strokes to try to catch some of the big stuff like Arbor Colossus, Plukonos, Court of Calling, etc. What do we see on the other side? A Reclamation Sage, one copy of Hydra Broodmaster, two Hornet Nests, three, four copies of Nylea's Disciple. Three Nissa World Waker, a Doomway Giant, a Phyrexian Revoker, and two Bray Maggots. I think the four copies of Nylea's Disciple are obvious to bring in here against an aggressive burn strategy. I think the Nissas are okay, but I don't think Todd's going to really do heavy sideboarding here. I don't think he needs to. No, I don't think so either. We'll take a look at the rest of our 2014 Open Series schedule here. We don't have a lot of dates left, I, I suppose. I mean, we got a healthy amount of stuff to do. We do. So we're in Columbus this weekend, of course. Next weekend, we go to New Jersey for the Legacy Grand Prix. Then we have Richmond and Atlanta to close out November, and then a trip over to the West Coast to start off December. Portland, the Invitational in Seattle, and then finally, the Players' Championship, Roanoke, Virginia, December 20th and 21st. Hope you guys can join us for any of those shows if you're in the area. If not, come hang out with us here, twitch.tv slash scglive. We'll have some announcements to make in some of those tournaments as well. A little spoiler alert there, so you might want to keep uh, I'm gonna keep your eyes out for that. We have announcements at all of our tournaments. Well, this is true, but we have some... Okay, excuse me. We have some major announcements yes. to make yes. at some of those tournaments, so keep your, keep, your, uh, keep your eyes open. No spoilers yet, but maybe, maybe Season 2 for the Open Series will be a lot of fun. Maybe. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. Who knows? Maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I finally got what I wanted, maybe I didn't. We'll see. Anyone's guess. Could be, could be anyone. Could be anything. <laughs> Josh Aaron going to be on the play here for game number two. Just got aggro, maybe trending a little downward, perhaps? We have seen less of it. It's definitely not as dominant as it was. But that's also a small sample size. We had three, to uh, three opens in a row, I believe, won by it. Last week, it wasn't just guy aggro, but still a just guy based deck. And I think we're still going to see the copies in the top eight, even though not that many left undefeated after a round, or going into round six, rather. Only two copies. Might be a breakout turn for Mardu, though. Feels like it's a, a long time coming is a weird way to put it, but every time I see the deck on camera, I'm like, this deck's very good. There's a lot of power. Yeah. And there's some unique elements, too. You have Lightning Strike, so you match up well against Mantis Rider. You have Crackling Doom, so you have an element not afforded to other decks. And Butch of the Horde is an excellent threat. Yeah, you have Crackling Doom, so you match up well against creatures, which is always nice. Big creatures especially. Yeah. I, I love that card. If I was playing Standard, I would be playing some sort of de deck with that card in it. Here's Voyaging Seder from Anderson. Pairing with a couple of temples to start off. There's a third land. Let's see what three mana spell is going to be. It's going to be Mantis Rider. It's time to get the beatdowns in the air. That is the card against Green Devotion Strategies. Yep. Anderson has at least one copy of Quarter Calling. It looks like he may have two. You see, he's trying to accelerate there with the Voyaging Seder. Don't know what his turn looks like here. I believe he does have a copy of Eidolon of Blossoms as well. So, Green strategies are something that Anderson is very familiar with. Has played these in very high-level tournaments, World Championships before, as he will play a land here. Of course, revealing a Courser. 
And Todd just trying to weather the storm, set up one of these cores to get something big like Arbor Colossus or Hornet Queen. Mm -hmm. That's the big plan. Another Mantis Rider. Here's the beatdowns in the air. This is something you don't want to be on the other side of if you are playing some sort of green devotion strategy. Anderson going to quickly untap here. His draw step will be a course. Here, take a look at the top cards. Copy of Sylvan Carry added. His hand looks rather clunky at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's a generous way of describing it. I try to be nice. Bunch of chords, a course or a land, and an idol on it, looks like. It's no Lightning Angel. Might be better, though. Oh, it's definitely better than Lightning Angel. Yeah. A mana and a toughness, generally speaking. I would, I would remove a mana for most cards to get one less toughness. Fair enough. I guess, of course, we're a 2-3 two, three three for two. two. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a solid argument. Yeah. Solid argument there. Heron will draw. There is a Mystic Monastery in for six. It's pretty simple from here. Might be able to just burn him out now. Has Jeskai Charm, Suspension Field too. Court of Calling. Looks like it's going to be for one. Go get himself an Elvish Mystic. Well, Todd needs to do this just to set up his other cord. Yeah, and also because he doesn't want to draw that Sylvan Carry added. No thanks. So we'll see what the top card is from Corsair here in just a moment. And Anderson is an eight top card is a copy of Pelucranos. That's not a much help. What's this one? Windswept Teeth. All right. There we go. Mana and some life. Yeah? It'd be quite impressive for Todd to be able to stabilize against the draw he's facing right now. Yeah, especially when this deck has the ability just to burn you out from here. Like yeah. He's at eight. The opponent has four cards. And if I was Todd, I would just assume I was dead already. He's going to come in two triggers. He's up to ten. Take a look at the top card. It's a forest. But this shows the power of Courser. can keep you alive. He can go down to nine and sacrifice the fetch land up to 11. He's got the ability to play here. Pass the turn back. Heron will draw a card. Didn't fire off a Jeskai Charm. I think he wants to save that. In case Todd cords, he can just put the creature back on top of the deck. Yep. Anderson's top card was a forest. And so now he's going to cast Quarter Calling. So you're kind of shortcutting a little bit here, hoping this cord will resolve. It's going to be for five. So this is to search up Big Pop Arbor Colossus. Top card is Sylvan Curry added right now. So. And this is problematic for Todd here because I think that he wanted to do this to play around counter spells as much as possible. But because Josh has suspension field in hand, I think Todd doing this in a spot where Josh now gets to play the suspension field in his main phase will kill him. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? What card do you want to play around there in that instance? Do you want to play around a counter spell or do you want to play around a, a sorcerer speed removal spell? Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not saying Todd's play is incorrect. It's yeah, just yeah. did I, not I, break the right way for him. I think it's a tough situation to try to figure out which one you want to play around. Land's going to come into play, going to go up to seven. There's a forest. Just flying is just such a beating against this deck. It's unbelievable. Though not Todd with the other cord in hand. Can cord up a Hornet Queen. That's all sorts of blockers. And then if he doesn't get burned out. I think Stormer Dragon was the draw. Todd might be able to work his way back into this game. He'll have to, oh no. Uh, oh boy. Oh no. Yeah, this is a, oh boy. That's for seven. They never play around the third chord. <laughs> <laughs> Todd says, I'm gonna get Hornet Queen and block all of your creatures. And now we gotta try to close this baby out quick. Well, Todd has two courses in play. Yeah, he's that's gonna, true. He's gonna be crawling back in. He has a land in his hand. Yep. And Josh is left with a couple copies of Seek of the Way and Jeskai Charm in hand. So I think Todd has definitely turned this all the way around. Top card's a Courser number three. <laughs> Normally a bad draw might be okay. I, I think Josh, any threat that can gain some life, I'm sure Todd will take. Draw the Courser. Top card, Sylvan Carry added. Yeah, I think you gotta, I think you gotta play the Courser and just get some more life if you can. This says a lot about the power of Court of Calling. I mean, Todd's hand was so clunky to start this game off. Facing down turn three, turn four, Mantis Rider, the death knell for green devotion for the most part. I think it's also the initial use of Cord, right? The, the Cord for one. Yeah. To get the ball rolling was really important. This is a card that I think, I, I feel is really underplayed in the format. It's just so powerful. And there's so many good cre green creatures that, yeah, I don't want three of these, but having the power to go get one of them at some point in the game is awesome. 
Anderson goes up to nine. His hand is pretty loaded. Looks like he's just going to pass the turn back. Hmm. Well, I think Todd's probably saying I can only lose to end hostilities. Josh has been sitting on a lot of cards in his hand. Maybe that's what's going on. Okay. There's a seeker. Well, all you can do is make your read and trust it. There's another seeker. Todd's not losing this game to kind of, you know, like random stuff on the ground, you know? It's only if he gets swept up. Top card, Voyaging Seder. I believe Heron only has one card left in his hand. I believe it was a copy of Just Guy Charm at this point. Yep. So, Anderson's going to go reaching. Tapping some mana here. There's a Belupronos there. It's time to get in the red zone. And this is really nice from Todd here because he's placing that one card in hand. So if Josh makes a move and plays a spell, in response, he can use Pelucranos to fight one of the Seekers before the prowess trigger resolves. Block, block. Jeskai Charm. I believe that'll be for plus one, plus one. In reality, that's actually plus two, plus two. But Pelucranos can still fight in response. Yep. And that's why you saw him play pre-combat. So there is the fight. Anderson will win it. Now, Heron will gain a little bit of life, and Anderson will lose a courser, but Anderson has turned this game around in a big way. That Hornet Queen from the third quarter was huge. Game-winning, one could say, as Heron will draw a card. It's not end hostilities. That's going to do it. Todd Anderson's going to win this match over Josh Heron. Two games to zero. Green-Black Devotion able to overcome the double Mantis Rider draw. Very impressive stuff there from Anderson. And not by using removal spells. Normally when it's able to beat Mantis Rider, it's because it went into the sideboard and got copies of things like Bile Blight or... Murderous Cut or Hero's Downfall, but Todd was just able to overpower it with green creatures and the ability to get exactly what he needed at a moment's notice. Green Black Devotion moving on to 6-1. and one. Anderson lost early. It was either round 2 or round 3 for him. We actually caught the back end of it, lost the Blue-White Heroic. And actually, you know, talking to him about it, we said it kind of during the match, he lost that match due to mistakes.